So uh, if the baby needs surfactant based on the above, the next decision is to go for Lisa or we decide on whether the baby needs to stay ventilated for a brief period. And this decision is also a complex decision uh, linking different factors in the case, like if the baby didn't have antenatal steroids, if there is a sign of PPHN that the baby is uh, showing shunting or fluctuating, there's a pre postrectal difference. Or if the baby has hypotension or a sign of sepsis, then you can prefer to keep the baby ventilated for a few hours before you remove the tube. If everything else is okay, it's just the RDS and the baby is otherwise stable, you can do insure. And uh, so uh, these are the settings where you would consider uh, keeping the tube in. And uh, in the resource limited settings, again, uh, there are studies coming out on how to confirm the tube with the ATCO2 sensor, even with non-invasive techniques like LISA. Uh, the insure technique, it's more straightforward in terms of uh, making sure the tube is in the right place. You're comfortable uh, intubating the baby with a smaller ET tube, so you don't need to use a larger ET tube in these cases, just as small as possible. You confirm the ET tube position uh, and then give the surfactant and remove the tube. So in terms of pulmonary outcome, I don't believe it will make a big difference whether you use insure or LISA. Of course, the LISA cat uh, enables you to continue the CPAP more easily than if you are intubating the baby. Uh, some people report using insure and keeping the CPAP on at the same time, which may be challenging. But of course, when you are intubating, keep the Neopuff and the mask CPAP handy so that minimum period without the CPAP. Uh, 